Hi there, this is Ale Davin Ale, uh, therefore is looking so weird, but yeah, uh, this is uh, the dubbing of an exhibition I was working this year in northern Chile, uh, what is called uh, We Are an Ecosystem, Somos un Ecosistema. This exhibition was made in Spanish and as you were a little curious about, and therefore I think you are in this video, uh, you can have a guide tour uh, around it. Um, yeah, and I'm going to translate it. Uh, in English, and hopefully we'll have subs in other languages that are going to be available soon. Well, this exhibition was founded by the uh, program of the Minister of uh, Ministry of Science, Technology, Knowledge and Innovation in Chile, uh, that is called Ciencia Pública, uh, which means uh, public science, and doing together with the Universidad de Antofagasta, and a Centro Cultural Estación Antofagasta, what is the place that this is exhibition is placed. Well, this exhibition uh, is exploring the relationship with our microorganisms that are living inside, on, and around us, what is called a microbiome. I mean, in, we are humans, so the human microbiome. So we are going to explore that and rethink about ourselves and microorganism in not in this hierarchic view that is our human side on charge of the microbiome side and vice or vice versa, uh, because this is more an horizontal relationship, more like equals, and they are working together or we are working together as an ecosystem. Therefore, this exhibition is called We Are an Ecosystem. Pretty creative, isn't it? Well, I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, let's see how it's going. I'm really improvising a lot. And uh, you can see now I'm talking something completely different. But uh, yeah, I think you got the idea. And let me know if you want more videos about this project. Bueno, para iniciar, podemos ver aquí en well, la to ropa, start, we can see eh, here this eh, sculpture that is inspired on a stone eh, that is about the tree of life, but made with eh, plants that, eh, fossilized plants that were growing in northern Chile. We have at the bottom Luca for, eh, that is the root of this tree that is called Last Universal Common Ancestors, that was the basis to all living in our planet. We have first bacteria that they were starting to appear in our planet, and it's actually the microorganism that we are thinking mostly when we are talking about microbes. Uh, but this is part is growing so quickly and so huge, but it's not the only part that we have microbes that are organisms that are so tiny we cannot see on the naked eye. And we have also archaea that was think in a really long time that that was a kind of a extreme bacteria, but now with the access to technology, we can see that despite they look quite similar, they are more similar to archaea and archaea than archaea and bacteria. And this is a whole domain, a uh, part of both of them, uh, that is called archaea. And the last one, we have eukarya, which is characterized that have cells with uh, organelles like compartments as in different to archaea and bacteria that they don't have it. Uh, but in eukarya, we have the last part of the tree that was appearing, and we have ciliate, flagellates, and in the upper part, when uh, Carla, our colleague, a friend, is showing, we can see there like plants, fungi, where we have like uh, mushrooms and yeast, and finally animals. And there, in one of those, thanks, Carla, there, one of those little leaves, we have the human species, what is a really tiny leaf in this whole tree. But it's not less important because every single leaf in this tree it represents one species that has been in our planet, and they are all super important and it's part of our diversity because our world is uh, microbes. 
and microbial. And here in this tiny part, we have a tiny tree that is inspired on viruses, but they are so diverse that they don't have a universal tree like the tree of life, uh, but uh, they don't have root, and this is only a representation of the bacteriophages that are viruses that infect the bacteria only. And yeah, all living organisms had their own phages or own viruses, uh, but in this case, I'm showing just that one. And now we are continue with this exhibition. Continue this uh, tour, uh, we are entering this tunnel that is explaining that our world is microbial. And by the way, they have some QR codes that are going to the website, but so far it's in Spanish. I'm going to let you know when we are going to translate that. It had been a lot of work, so uh, yeah, I'm looking for some time for it. So when we are entering here, we are seeing uh, this under the sea uh, environment where at the beginning we have those uh, anerotherman vents that were possibly the starting of life where we have those extreme uh, conditions like really low temperature um, in the deep sea in contrast of the high temperature and pressure that are pumping out from those uh, adrothermal vents, where possibly started those first organic molecules that afterwards uh, appear LUCA. And that was the basis to many organisms that we know nowadays uh, as microorganisms. So those uh, organisms started to adapt, and when outside that part, and when spreading throughout those hydrothermal vents uh, around the, the water that was surrounding it. And furthermore, they went like uh, around the water column, around the surface, and right now uh, there is more microorganisms as stars are in the known universe. What is actually a lot? Like, I cannot even imagine that number. Anyway, when they went to the surface, they are starting to adapt and spreading even from there, as we can see in this animation. So then from there on, they are starting to came to the soil, to the ice, and adapted to those new environments. And for example, um, the oxygen we are breathing uh, we can see that it's coming from the Amazon, from the forest, from the plants that they were appearing afterwards in the evolutionary history of our planet. But actually, those places are the most important uh, terrestrial environments. But the key from our planet is actually coming from the sea and coming from microorganisms who are able to do photosynthesis, photosynthesis as uh, similar to plants. Uh, so when we are breathing our air, it's actually coming from microorganisms. But yeah, uh, microorganisms were the basis for all the life beings in our planet, including themselves. Uh, our world is microbial, and we are part of the world, so we are also microbes. Uh, here is Carla. Hey! <laughs> uh, but yeah, each one of us is actually a world, and we are having our microbes that are inside, on, and surrounding us. And this is called Macrobiome, this group of all of them. And this is characteristic of uh, ourselves. Uh, shaped by our age, the place that we are living, what we are eating, the people we are surrounded by, our friendships, our relationships, our gender and sexual identity, if we are migrants, if we are BIPOC or an indigenous especially, etc. Everything of that is uh, shaping ourselves like macro and micro. So here in this infographic, we can see different examples of uh, how the microbiome is in and on our body. 
And this is not uniform spirit. This is having different uh, organizations uh, in our body. And here we can see first how uh, an example of our skin, which is uh, as this is having an external contact directly and constantly. The microbiome on the skin is actually the one that is changing the most. For example, uh, on hands is different the one that we are having uh, in contact with the t-shirts and etc. And in contrast with this dynamic, we can see one of the most um, stable microbiomes in our body that is actually from the sexual organs. So uh, for trans people who are having a, a genital surgery and hormone uh, treatment, they have a different microbiome from cis people, but this is not something in between. This is their own characteristic and part of their own identity. And here in the gut, we can see the most known uh, microbiome in our body, also known as bacterial flora, but it's way wider than bacteria and way more complex than just a flora. Um, but here we can see that they have the in high importance to absorb nutrients to uh, and in the gut is having the highest number of species and also on quantity. So as I mentioned before, there are some uh, microbes that are in our guts that are helping us to absorb food. For example, fi fiber uh, rich uh, nutrients that the, those molecules are breaking up firstly by bacteria and then afterwards absorbing by our um, human cells. And this is not, not only like helping to absorb nutrients, this is not only happening in the guts, but also in our skin. And uh, when we are under the sun and this is helping us to absorb vitamin D and so on, this uh, job is doing together with bacteria that are helping us to synthesize and absorb vitamin D. And also the dynamic of the microbiome is changing through time. And for example, we are when we are more sociable, we are going to other places, sharing with more people, our chemical signals are also changing and our microbiome is more dynamic and diverse. However, when we are under stress uh, situations, our uh, to be alone, to be uh, under stress, this is reducing the diversity of our whole microbiome. Well, this relationship is not only about uh, functions, about how it, dynamics, but also about number. Number is important in this case. I mean, we can see here this sculpture inspired on a, a huge one that is outside the Antofagasta city that is called Mano del Desierto, Hand of the Desert, that is a huge stone with a hand that in this case, this is way smaller and represented the relation uh, of the estimation of human and microbial cells in our body. It's estimated that for each 10 human cells, we have 13 microbial cells, which is a lot. And actually, when we are seeing us, it's like, hey, where are those? It is like more than a half of my cells. But this is because they are so tiny as we cannot see on, um, on the naked eye. But um, on ways, this high number is like around 200 grams till one kilo of waste, which is actually also a lot. And this relationship is also around our whole lifespan of beyond. And here we can see one of the paint inspired of, of the breastfeed uh, period 
or lactation. Sorry, I don't have so much vocabulary in that stage, but when you are giving milk to the baby. And uh, through, in this case, a mom is giving milk to a baby. And for a long time, it was thought that this had uh, the nutrients and also the defense for the baby to grow uh, strong and healthy. But a part of that, what is actually really important, is also microorganism and is the big uh, input for uh, the microbiome that is afterward staying and colonizing the guts. Uh, so it's super important where uh, is the decision to give or not milk. Um, it's also important to consider this step and to uh, give the baby through other methods uh, this uh, part so important for the microbiome. But uh, this is not only uh, important in our beginning of our life, uh, our microbiome, but also through the whole life, and this is another paint, inspired on couples and how we are uh, sharing microbiome uh, through sharing spaces, through sharing stories and laughing and uh, moments in our life. And as more time we are being together, our microbiome is getting more and more similar. We are not stopped to be in ourselves, but this is a point of a balance of equilibrium. Um, till is this uh, point. But if something happens and the couple is getting separated by any reason, uh, maybe they are breaking up, maybe they are going to another country, uh, the microbiome is slowly coming back to the individual stage. But this is still a little part of the other person for a really long time. And this is not only for romantic relationship or partnership relationship, but also when we are sharing spaces with our families, with our friends and other people. And also, like now changing topic, we can see how is a microbiome like um, establishing sharing spaces like physically, well, a representation of a biofilm that is a layer of microbiome or of microbes that in this part, the violet part, is an enriched and healthy and balanced microbiome full of different microorganisms, different colors, different forms, all this diversity living together, sharing together, and sharing spaces. But however, if something uh, like a pathogen is appearing there, an uh, agent like a microbe that is affecting us uh, negatively, the microbiome is changing, and now it's appearing more, it's appearing less. And we are starting to feel bad. And if we are getting infected by uh, this pathogen, this yellow guy there, we are going to an specialist and that person is giving us, for example, antibiotics that are those little copper uh, balls. And uh, antibiotics is killing all living beings, therefore antibio that are sensitive to that compound. And therefore, we can see there in this orange part that is almost nothing. And to the microbiome to recover from that orange state and be back to this violet one, so diverse and rich, is taking around one year. So imagine if we are taking antibiotics every single winter. So uh, the poor microbiome is getting high damage. Uh, but this is not only that. Uh, also, if we are taking antibiotics, like the specialist is telling us five days, and I'm taking the first day, I'm starting to feel better. So at the second day, I'm already healthy. So then I'm stopping this treatment because I'm already fine. Big, really big mistake. Because as you can see, there are so little pieces of this pathogen is still there and it can start to grow again. And when it's doing that, it's starting to get antibiotic resistant. 
And then if it's growing again and we are going to the specialist or not and just taking this antibiotic, then the first day is doing nothing. The second day, oh, neither. And we are, wow, well, why? I mean, the last time I was feeling fine before what was happening, it got antibiotic resistant. So then the third, fourth, fifth day is doing nothing. And then we are taking a harder antibiotic and then uh, higher, higher and damaging the microbiome, not uh, getting rid of the pathogen. And what we can do if this, uh, uh, this pathogen is getting resistant to all antibiotics, what is already happening. So this is super important. Uh, to take care of the scientific communities working super hard to figure out and finding other methods that are not using antibiotics that you can write it in the comments and we can talk a little more about it and can do a video uh, but what we can do as individuals is not self-medicate and just take antibiotics when an specialist is telling us by the time is stipulate by the dose that this specialist is telling us and the date that is uh, given by the recipe. So when, when we are finished this treatment, then afterwards we can also help our microbiome with pre and probiotics. Prebiotics is working like the plant compost. So it's having the highly nutrients and the key nutrients that the microbiome needs to grow uh, healthy and strong. For example, fi uh, fiber rich uh, food, uh, veggies, fruits, especially when we are buying in our local store or our local place. And probiotics is better known as, for example, um, food that are having living microorganisms that are helping the microbiome that is already there. For example, as a supporter of the video games. Example for that, we have yogurt. It can be um, those brands that are saying like with probiotics or contain lactobacillus and so on that are appearing on TV. But any natural yogurt and also a kefir or like handmade yogurt are uh, helping us because in the process is uh, having these probiotics. And if you are not um, eating um, milk-based uh, food, you can also eat, um, for example, oh, I forgot the name in English, like sauerkraut, um, pickles, uh, all like these uh, onions on vinegar, like all this food that is uh, naturally fermented to be made not the sandwich that you forgot at the bottom of the backpack, backpack sorry, mom. Uh, this is not uh, the proper one uh, to make, to that having probiotics. Uh, yeah, pickles like uh, honest in vinegar, food in vinegar, and also yogurts and so on are helping it a lot. And now, we, as we were talking about pathogens, we need to talk about this one that we don't want it in our microbiome so far, that is the SARS-CoV-2, um, the virus that is uh, causing uh, COVID-19. And this is part of the coronavirus family that is actually a big family of many uh, viruses, but this is the latest one that we know about. And here we can see that inside is this kind of noodle there is having the genetic material uh, that is, the, is having the information to produce those proteins that are outside it that are making this envelope, like this cover of the uh, virus. And we can see there that is having like this genetic material is having stripes of color that are like to produce each one of those. And the most important of those proteins there are actually the spike protein, this uh, or, uh, orange, sorry, this uh, pink one, that one. Thanks, Carla. 
Eh, and this one is characteristic and um, for this uh, virus specifically. And this is helping us to identify it, for example, in PCR tests and also is the target of uh, many vaccines. Currently in Chile, uh, others are working similarly. Uh, we are having five vaccines with three uh, way of actions, like methods of uh, actions to uh, be affected and secure. The first one, we have the inactive virus that uh, Sinovac is working with, uh, which is actually just this envelope, use this uh, capsid protein like these um, four colors that we saw in the model. And then the body is receiving it. And then he's saying like, what is that? Like, this is not my microbiome. Why I want those? That is us. So when he's finding that, he's keeping on mind, and then if the person is infected, the body can react faster. As doesn't have any genetic material, it cannot proliferate, therefore is secure and also effective. The next one that we have there is the viral vector that uh, CanSino, AstraZeneca, and Johnson & Johnson vaccines are working with, in which we can resume as a kind of really weird costume because it's having those envelope proteins that I, I mentioned to you before, this capsid, but from another family that is called from a adenovirus, like a really different one. But the genetic material is from the SARS-CoV-2. So it's really not fitting together. So it's looking really suspicious. So the body, when it's receiving it, it's like saying like, oh, that looks super weird though. So it's keeping an eye on it. And if the person is getting infected by, the body, the immune system can react to because it's having it, uh, in their memory. Uh, as the genetic material is completely different from the capsid proteins and vice versa, this is not proliferating and therefore is secure and is effective. And the last one that we have there is the Pfizer BioNTech method that is using genetic material, RNA, but in this case, it's not the one that we saw at the beginning. Now we are going to the picture there, if we are giving a moment. There it is. So we are seeing that there are this uh, genetic material inside that is having the instructions, isn't So then is the one is giving that message to have this genetic material to produce those proteins is the messenger RNA, RNA M. Uh, and this one is as a post it, you are writing the message what you want to produce, you put it on the on the wall, and then at the end of the day is going to the floor and getting loose. So um, RNA, this messenger RNA is working uh, similarly in which is uh, effective for a really short time. So uh, then it's giving the information to produce actually this spike protein, this really characteristic protein I mentioned before. But it's not giving any other context to the body. So it's like, why I need to produce that? Uh, for what? What is going on? So then when the body is infected and is getting uh, the virus that is also having those uh, RNA uh, is giving the message again, this post-it, and then the body is receiving, ah, what's for that? That's really weird. I don't want it in my microbiome, and it's reacting. Therefore, as this messenger RNA 
is really um, useful for a really short time, this is secure and this is also effective because it's giving enough memory to the body. Also, Moderna is working on the same way. But uh, as I mentioned, uh, if the person gets infected, because it doesn't mean that you are not having any infection nevermore, uh, it means that uh, you can deal better with the symptoms, are higher chances you are not finishing at the hospital, and is reducing the fatality rate, and also reducing the um, the quantity or the rate of viruses you are having in the body, so you are spreading also less, is uh, protecting you and the others. But as any preventive method is not 100% secure, so you need to complement with more than one method. And this is this is uh, the reason why you need to complement. For example, uh, in this infographic you can see here, uh, where you can see firstly vaccination that is the most important uh, cheese here where it's covering each one whole uh, then afterwards you have a um, physical distance I mentioned you have a uh, macros surrounding you so we are changing less chances by having more distance Maintain ventilations in the areas you are you are staying. So if there is any virus in the air, it's just passing through. Wearing a mask uh, over your nose and mouth, not just one of those, please. Uh, also washing your hands with soap and water. And if you don't have uh, alcohol, 70%. Checking uh, regularly, like any detection test, like PCR or quick test, if you are having any symptoms of, or if you are having uh, the chance to have it for free, please do it to have a better monitoring of yourself and your develop. Um, and also as having a, a small bubble and keeping track of what's going on in your bubble. So if anyone is having any symptoms, telling to the other people. So we are all informed. We are all working as a community here. Uh, and yeah, in, if everything missed something, we still need to clean surface. Uh, so if something fails, we are also protecting ourselves. And about quarantine, microbiome, uh, is expected as it happened in other pandemics, epidemics, because this was um, happening in the whole history of humanity, uh, pandemics and epidemic, and sadly, this is not going to be the last one. Uh, our microbiome, as we are having quarantine, is reducing their diversity, as similar we saw in this uh, maps of a uh, microbiome at the beginning, uh, which is not necessarily bad. It's just a consequence of our actions. Our microbiome is giving their best to uh, deal to, during these hard times. So we also need to give our best. So to start to finish in this guide tour, uh, we can see my favorite baby, this paint that is uh, showing this relationship about our microbiome and our body and our self in this horizontal and more cyclic relationship where is no higher hierarchy in this uh, complexity of connections. And this is representing a specific case of um, that is called the brain microbiome and gut axis, which are all of those well connected and all together. Um, because in our brain is having the neurons that are finishing also uh, on our guts 
and this is producing some chemical signals that our microbiome is receiving it and uh, reacting uh, related to that. Uh, on the other way, the microbiome is producing also chemical uh, signals that our neurons are receiving and reacting through that. And this relation is so close together that is also uh, proposing to be an organ, like uh, the lungs and the heart, like the gut microbiome. That is really nice because uh, our reactions are having also an effect in our microbiome and also the microbiome is having a reaction on our brain and other organs. And to finish, yeah, we are not on war. We are not at war against microorganisms. As we saw in this exhibition, uh, the relationship with them is so close and so diverse. Uh, yeah, there are some pathogens that are affecting us, but is, this is not this invisible power for enemy or foe that is against us. No, they are not having this morality. This is how it's working. And in case of the pandemic, it's a really complex situation that are having this one as a consequence. As we saw at the beginning, we could see a high diversity of organisms that are in our planet, that most of them are my microorganisms. And the air we are breathing, the food we are eating, everything surrounding us is related to the microbial world. And this relationship is not having this uh, against or this competition as we could see, think as a war is way more complex and way more horizontal, more intersectional and more complex because most of organisms are having non effect on us or a benefit to us. A pathogens are representing just a small part. And we are more like a ecosystem. That's where we are. We are an ecosystem. Thanks to everyone.